Right, so this is the last thing. And um, I would like to talk about Jezebel spirits and uh, soul ties. Soul, the human soul. <laughs> soul ties. Uh, I'm going to be to base on elaboration of, of a man who is called, I will tell you, John Clark. It's but it is one of the best things I, I could find. Uh, but it's what he says is is real. It's really it's the way it is. And I was told exactly the same way. It does exist and it's very powerful and destroys lots of human uh, beings, I mean, spiritually destroys and physically and emotionally as well. Jezebel is known to you from the, the, the book of Kings, remember the first one, uh, chapter 16, 18, 19, the very powerful queen and not the good ones. So Jezebel is there if you would like to, to follow uh, the scriptures, the 1631, 18, 4 to 9, 19, 1 to 2. It is all based on the scripture. So, <coughs> <coughs> what is a Jezebel? Jezebel is the very powerful demon. It's not the spirit. Remember, I was talking about spirits. It's not the spirit. Spirits are the just the normal soldiers uh, making our life difficult. Jezebel is the demon. Very big and very, very powerful demon. Jezebel uses the powers of seduction to lure her victims and create soul ties. Soul ties. The Jezebel spirit is a strong man spirit. What's in, in, in the Jezebel spirit we can see? She works a network of demon powers to climb her ladder of control. So it's the network. She runs the network of demons. She is the queen. She is the mother bee. And then she is in charge of the whole network of demons to climb her ladder of control. Some of the arrows of her quiver that create soul ties include the spirit of witchcraft and the spirit of seduction. And Jezebel is the master of seduction. It's very, very important to understand. What does seduction means, you know, is to, to lead astray. That's what she does. The word seduction means to lead astray. Step by step is the process. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not like, like this. But she's very, very powerful and very craft demon. So the spirit of seduction and the spirit of witchcraft are cousins. They are very close to each other. So seduction and witchcraft. So people are leading astray, let's say, from the true faith to the false faith, to control, to witchcraft, and a very slow and very, very intelligent process. So you don't know that you're leading, you know, you're being led astray. It's not obvious. You think you are on the right way, but obviously you are not. The bait of Jezebel that creates soul ties. What is that all about? How does the spirit create soul tie? You know, soul, my soul, human soul, not salt, <laughs> a soul, body and soul, okay? A soul tie. <coughs> when Jezebel realizes the spirit of seduction, a spiritual force is released against your mind, imagination and emotions. So she releases the spirit of seduction attacking your mind, your imaginations, or your emotions. Seduction is the bait that leads to a soul tie. You are the fish. So, can you imagine just a man with a rod, fish rod, trying to catch a fish? So it's the hook and it's the bait. So you are the fish. See, she is the fisher. 
she's the one who is doing this. So once you've got a hook, she's pulling you out. So that's how it works. So the fish cannot get, out, no, get free. It's impossible. So that's exactly the same. Once you're hooked by Jezebel, you cannot get free unless you're freed by someone else. Do you understand me now? So it's like a, you have a rope and a hook on this side and hook on that side. So it's, I'm, one hook is in my heart, another hook is in your heart. And you cannot be free from that person. That's how it looks like. You know, it needs to be cut like a rope. I need to use the powerful spiritual scissors that need to be cut. <coughs> <coughs> the purpose of seduction is to uh, create a soul tie that can be used to control you. So I'm uh, the one with the rod, fish rod, and I'm controlling you. I'm the boss and you do what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> it's horrible. I have full control over your body, your mind, the way you behave. A soul tie is the spiritual or emotional attachment to another person. Spiritual or emotional attachment to another person. That is the soul tie. In this case, the bond is with a demonic spirit called Jezebel. So not just purely emotional stuff. You know sometimes when you have a boy and a girlfriend and they fell in love and then after a while the boy says, you know, they had a relationship, sex, the boy is saying, okay, I'm good bored with you, moving to another girl. And the girl one year, two years, three years, and is still in terrible state. You cannot forget him, you know. We say, oh, it was the first love, you know. No, that's the Jezebel as well. And another way around as well. So the relationship is over, but in mind is not. <laughs> You're still controlled, but him or her. You know, it's a Jezebel spirit. So... <sighs> Soul ties can be created in many ways. First of all, sexual relationship. I mean, the unhealthy one, not in a marriage. <coughs> when I work with people, when I do the discernment of spirits, I always ask about rela sexual relationships in the past. Oh yes, I had a girlfriend when I was 16, another girlfriend when I was 17, another girlfriend when I was 20. And you know, they're still in my mind. I'm married now, but I still go back to so and so, you know. I cannot be free from that. This is a soul tie. So, it's the sexual relationship, any kind. Emotional manipulation is another soul tie. There are people who manipulate you at work, in the parish, at family, whatever, organization. So this is, <clears throat> now is personal tragedies as well. So it's very important. Loss of a loved one is another way to, for the unhealthy soul type. Consoling another is what we call it spiritual dating. Let's say I'm going to, to be with you, to guide you to, to the Catholic Church. So you, you create a soul tie, you know, you create an unhealthy relationship. And sometimes young priests, they think, and they, could, they have a very good, you know, intention to, let's say there's a young girl. And they've got very good intention to, to bring her back to church. So the young priest is going to that girl, you know, telling about the church, praying together, being together, once a month, once a week, every day. And sometimes they end up in bed. You know, it's a spiritual date. <laughs> it's nothing to do later on. It's a spiritual tie. It's getting unhealthy. How many priests left priesthood because of, you know, it started just in a very 
innocent way, somewhere, a new parishioner, a daughter of the parishioner, something, and all of a sudden, there was a relationship that was growing in, the priest was maybe lonely, maybe not happy with his vocation, thousands and thousands then. And the, the woman was created a soul tie between them, they went in closer, closer, and closer, and the priest is gone. I mean, one of these uh, uh, um, examples, but uh, so this is consoling another, reaching out to the lonely is the same, you know. So uh, it's lots of lots of ways the soul ties could be created, but do you understand me what I'm talking about? Uh, lots of ways. You have to be very careful. Uh, once the soul tie has been established, Jezebel victim becomes a eunuch. You know the eunuch is the one who cannot procreate. So you are the victim. She is the boss. <coughs> she is the one who, we say in England, wears the trousers. <laughs> she is the one. He's, she's giving you orders. You are the victim, so you are he's called the eunuch. A eunuch is the child of the Jezebel spirit. And Jezebel eunuch has no life outside the controlling world of Jezebel. So she dominates. She dominates. She's the boss. The eunuch is the victim, the fish. And so how does it work in life? Let's say I, people say I struggle with my imaginations. She comes back to my mind, you know. She's telling me all the time what to do. I live in fear of someone. Or I have a relationship, sexual relationship with, let's say, a secretary once. Just once off. But this comes back all the time to me, you know. My relationship with my wife is it's, it's getting worse and worse. Because why? Because you became a eunuch. <laughs> She controls you. That woman who you had the sex with started controlling you. If she had a Jezebel spirit, she was doing everything to get you. And then once you decided to have a sexual relationship, she, you became a eunuch of that. So she is the boss. You are the fish. It's very important to understand because there's so many relationships, so many, so many things happen to, in marriages, the priesthood or whatever, so all of a sudden, you know, this excellent priest and fell in love. What happened to him? He loved Jesus so much. And all of a sudden, there was a woman, a parishioner, someone came, bang, 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 the priest is gone. Or there was such a beautiful marriage. All of a sudden, bang, 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 and the marriage is over. The girl just appeared from nowhere. <coughs> <coughs> because we don't understand. So... <coughs> Not very often, but sometimes, if the priest have a housekeeper, you know this kind of, she's alpha and omega, everything in a parish. She runs the show. Very often they are Jezebels. They run the, the church, they run the, the parish, they run the, and the priest does everything what she says. Very often Jezebel spirits attacks rectories. The same like the, in a parish. You some have some influential people who run the whole parish and touch that person, it's a massive problem. You know, they're bossy, they know everything, they, they need to always be on the top of everyone. And these people, they very often, they ruin the whole community. Because people say, I'm, I'm not coming anymore because I can't stand this situation. If the priest doesn't know that this is Jezebel's spirit, and he thinks, oh, that's... That lady is amazing, you know, it's fantastic. She's, so, she's an activist, she's everywhere. She cleans, she sings, she plays, she serves the altar, you know. But she, what she really does, she controls. She controls the priest. She controls the priest, she controls the whole, the whole parish. So the soul ties that have been created and needed to be broken in prayer by the delivering power of the Holy Spirit spirits. You cannot just shake it off. You say, I'm going to finish. You can run away, but it still will be here. She will be still controlling you. So 
It needs to be, you need a priest who will break the negative soul tie. A lot of priests don't do this because they don't know about anything. And I say to a priest, have you ever done it before? What is that all about? What are you talking about? Jezebel, spirits, soul ties? Yes. Have you done it before? No. I'm not surprised because I was one, one of them. So it's, it's Jezebel spirits always it's in action when the marriage is, you know, <laughs> on the verge of collapsing. It's the woman all of a sudden coming from nowhere. My husband just left after 20 years of <coughs> being with me, just left me. Why? We say, oh, it's, you know, is that the age, is the time? It's no. Very often, the other Jezebel spirits attack marriages and priests. It's the woman's uh, demon. So it's, that's why it's very important to know. And very often we say, oh, my husband's completely got crazy, you know. She was, he was such a beautiful man all of a sudden. I don't know what happened to him. He lost his mind for her. <laughs> because it's Jezebel spirit. I work with one guy with beautiful wife, no children, beautiful wife and everything. And, and that woman with Jezebel spirit just completely seduced him. He was going there and going there back and forwards, you know, spending all his money he earned. I said, what are you doing? He lost his mind. She was a witch. <laughs> she had a, a Jezebel spirit, but he laughed at me. This marriage doesn't exist anymore. <coughs> so the soul ties, once again, the soul ties is a cord that the Jezebel spirit wraps around her victim. So it's the cord around you. So you become completely, totally controlled by, this, by the person with the Jezebel spirit. The spirit of Jezebel can't deceive you without seducing you first. To accomplish that goal, she will use several spirits in her network, including the seducing spirits. So the spirits of manipulation, domination, control, and power. You know? So all spirits are the witchcraft spirits. So manipulation, domination, control, and power. Jezebel spirits can lure one into sexual sin, but also into scriptural error and idolatry. So, so let's say it's a priest, and all of a sudden it's the woman in the parish, or somewhere. It's a moment of weakness. And if it's the Jezebel spirit involved, if the priest is unaware of the danger, believe me, it's the matter of time when the priest will end up in bed. It's very powerful. And we've lost, I've lost so many good friends, priests, lovely priests, who've been seduced by Jezebel spirits. Because Jezebel spirits aiming at priests so much, because that is the best prey, you know, is the priest. And once they've got the priest, either he's, he, he's leaving and he's gone, or <laughs> do a life, being a priest and having a secret lover and a sacrilege. And you know, <laughs> and multiplies because he's living in sin and at the same time he's acting as a priest. So, so he's celebrating mass in sacrilege. He commits sacrilege each time he sac. He celebrated the Mass. And this is the best prey. The su greatest success of the Jezebel spirits is the priest who is either gone out of the ministry or is doing this game with parishioners. <coughs> <coughs> so, my dear friends, the spirit of error is another one. It's not just about the sex, but the spirit of error. So, the Jezebel spirit... It's, the, it's uh, acting very strongly and it's leading us into error. It means to cause to, to cause to stray, to lead astray, to lead into error, to deceive, to fall away from truth. It's another one. So you're not living 
in truth, you're living in, in a different world. The Jezebel spirit is prophetic teaching spirit that leads people away from truth into sin, rebellion, error, and idolatry. How many people we've, le we've lost in the Catholic Church? How many people follow the different kind of teaching? They found Jesus in different denominations, groups, sects, whatever you call them. They found the truth. They are born again. The Catholic Church was bad. Now they are absolutely amazing Christians. They are free. They love Jesus. It's a Jezebel spirit. It's not true. It's a Jezebel, Jezebel spirit. And the Jezebel spirit very often creates confusion. Confusion. Where is the truth? Which way to go? I don't know. Now this, this man speaks this way, another, another way, it's confusion. We always would like to have a clear picture. You know, either it's something white or black, but not gray. You know, like a dirt to water. <laughs> dirt to water is a satanic water. It's nothing to do with God. What is gray, you cannot see. It's still not too, too dirty, but it's dirty enough that you cannot clearly see the stuff. And that's what the Jezebel does. The, the spirit of confusion, total confusion. And Jezebel needs to be in control publicly or behind the scenes. You know, pulling the strings. So sometimes it's very open. You can see someone is in control all the time without even knowing it or being aware of. But very often, it's happening behind the scene. It's the one face from outside, sweet, honey, you know, I will love you, stay with you, God loves you. And behind the scene is a different one. And it's so difficult to see where the real world is, where is the, the, the truth. But it's, she's a, a master of, of deception. She makes you feel powerless, out of control, confused, and with severe depression. Jezebel spirits cause depressions, severe depressions. People say, I, I can't live anymore, I can't be bothered really. I can't be bothered a priest anymore. You know, this kind, I can't, I can't carry on with my marriage, with my children, with everything, my job is... It's total depression. People go to the doctors, trying different kind of tablets, you know what's happening. If the tablet helps, means it's, the, it's not spiritual. But very often I ask people, so did they help you? No. It's worse, getting worse, and getting worse. So as already said, the spirit of Jezebel forms soul ties. Jezebel spirits people are only tools used to advance her demonic agenda. Eunuchs are tied to Jezebel. So they look to her for approval, instruction, and validation. When puzzled, confused, confronted, uncorrected, they run to her. It's like the mother bee, you know? They always are sitting on it. Oh, you have to tell me, what should I do? Should I go this way? Should I go that way? What do you think? You cannot make your own decision. You always need a person to, to guide you, to push you, to say, yes, you have to go this decision. You have to go that way. Please don't do this or do that. You're completely stripped down of any, your own free will. You depend on someone else. And you don't realize. You think, oh, it's a friendship. Oh, I, you know, I love this person so much. I... We always decide together. No, that person de decides for you. You just obey her instructions. So without deliverance, a eunuch of Jezebel will always be a eunuch of Jezebel. So we need, we need uh, deliverance. Deliverance is needed for Jezebel's spirit. You cannot, it's not just confession. It's the spirit attached to you. <coughs> so confession comes first, but then deliverance is it's needed. And Jeze Jezebel can only use 
what is in you. So whatever is in, inside you, uh, she, can, she can use. Jezebel spirits can function without an Ahab. It means that the Jezebel spirit looks for some, something in you to operate. So she, she cannot operate on her own. She needs you and she needs to execute her power. Otherwise, she doesn't exist without you. You as a victim. She, she must have you to, to rule you, to guide you, to tell you what to do or what not to do. To create a soul tie, the Jezebel spirit must first seduce, and she seduces you, and she's very clever. They flatter and make you feel special and good about yourself. You know, how lovely you are, you're such a special neighbor, and we love you so much, come for the dinner, we, we need to be together, you know, let's be a beautiful neighbors. Well, I'm just making that up, but just, just flattering you. Oh, we had a horrible neighbor before, but you just, since you moved in, you're such a different area, you know, this, and you feel, oh my God, I'm, oh Father, you're such a beautiful, you know, the priest before you was horrible. You're such a different, this parish is amazing. Oh, we love you so much, Father. If you need anything, come to me. This is my telephone number. You know, we know you know this text. <laughs> <coughs> so it's, it's, it's flattering you. It's your ego, you know, it's pumping up your ego. Oh my God, really the Christianity started from me now. <laughs> this parish has the real priest now. I'm the one uh, powerful man. The Jezebel spirit knows how to feed you with compliments if that's what it takes to build a relationship with you. So it's a very slow process, but bit by bit, she's taking your hand, your arm, and more and more and more. And the Jezebel spirit takes advantage of all our weaknesses. As your relationship with Jezebel continues, she makes you feel that you can't live without her and need her in order to be successful. Can you imagine someone with Jezebel spirit and is the superior of the convent? Can you imagine someone with Jezebel spirit and be a boss in the big business? They are in charge. They always want to be in charge. And if even a superior has, has the Jezebel spirit, believe me, is the horror for the convent, for the nuns, for whatever they do. You think of all these scandals, all these things we witness whenever they, the big convents used to be and the big mother's superiors, you know, everyone was afraid of. It was at the time. I'm, I think privately that lots of them were with Jezebel spirits. And then what's happened? The Jezebel spirit created scandals, created all this stuff. What was hap it was happening, and and the convents doesn't uh, the convents don't exist anymore. So <coughs> the Jezebel demonic power sucks the life out of you and makes you want to give up and quit. That's what she wants. She wants to finish your life as a wife or husband or the priest or the friend of a neighbor. So I'm just telling you this stuff because we live in the world that is full of it full of it. So be careful. So when people, if you let's say you are 50 now or 60 and there's something, but there's some soul tie still there, even though the person is dead, the soul tie negative in your mind needs to be cut off. How many relationships, you know, I've got people saying, oh, I'm with my wife for 20 years, but Everything goes wrong. I'm still with Janet. I met when I was 20 and oh, we had a relationship. No, I, we're not together anymore for 20 years, but I'm still there. You know, She comes into my mind when I have a bad time with my wife. But the priests are the victims the most of the Jezebel spirits. It's not the color that protects me. What is really protects the priest? This attracts me. I mean, not my age, but it was the young, young, handsome priest. The color is attracting. It's the scapular. It's the scapular. It's against Jezebel spirits as well. 
but as my personal holiness, my protection as well. I tried in my life. I think, as I must tell you, that probably I wouldn't be here. I was the divine intervention. But I, when I was completely unaware of these uh, problems, uh, I was attacked by Jezebels. And it was just a pure miracle that someone saved my life. Now I'm, I'm speaking about this. I'm warning because I've seen so many, many colleagues, priests, friends, brothers who left. And I was telling them, listen, this is not for you. What are you doing? Completely, you know, blinded. Leave me alone. I'm fed up with everything. She is the only one for a couple of years. <laughs> Once she, he was out of priesthood, Jezebel left him. <laughs> That's what happens. Jezebel doesn't want that person. The only way to, to act, to do, is to get him out of priest, of the ministry. That's what she wants. When you are out, she dumps you like a, a garbage, you know. That's what that's. So I'm, I wanted to tell you this story because, my friends, you go back to your parishes and, uh, and you will see things happening. That very often in the parish communities, very often in, in convents, rectories, when if it's the woman involved, or housekeepers sometimes, or this. In Poland, we say there's like a house, housekeeper, like a Rod, Rodweiler, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Guarding the priest and don't even come close to the rectory, you know? What do you want? <laughs> You're just a housekeeper, no? What do you want? Tell me first. And if I decide to tell him, you know, these kind of things, he is the first guarding the priest. The priest is happy. Oh, my, I've got the lovely woman. But it's really, she's, she's running the show. So I'm telling you this. There's the spiritual force called Jezebel. Very dangerous. Maybe you, you need to be cut off from something from the past. I don't know. But it's really, it will destroy you. It's destroying you slowly, your mental life. Uh, your f feelings, your, uh, all your life, everything. Because that's what, that is Jezebel. There's no mercy. She doesn't want you to be happy. She wants to destroy your marriage, destroy your personal relationship, destroy my priesthood, destroy everything. So just be careful. If you, need to have it, if you need to have it done, just ask the priest, hopefully the one who would know what to do, and have it cut off all this relationship, emotional ties, so, negative soul ties. What is the positive soul tie? It's the friendship. It's love. That's the positive soul ties. The two souls are positively connected. Negative is unfortunately this, what they've said. Is that okay, what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I know it's difficult, but it's probably very new stuff, but it's helpful. Because if it's something sitting in your mind, and it's, you can still struggle with it. Believe me, it's, it's, it's worth to, to do something with it. I've seen young couples and then they say he loved her and got married and everything was fine. But then after a while, things go wrong. Because he, before they got married, they used, he used to have five, six, seven women. So there was all... No, Negative soul ties between them because they have sex, 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 sex. And now he got married, but still is connected with the other ones. And what about if someone goes to the prostitute? Oh, my God. Can you imagine a woman who is a prostitute? What is inside her? I mean, spiritually. Everything. It's one act, sexual act with a prostitute. You got all this stuff from that woman. So it's not just, oh, I'm just paying $100 or whatever it costs, and, oh, you know, one's off. Why not? Believe me, spiritually you're dead. Because you got everything from that woman, or from that man, whatever, whoever, everything spiritually. You there's like connecting two computers, you know? Click, click, virus is there. <laughs> exactly the same. If you have a relationship with that woman, even once, you receive all this negative stuff from her, what she received from her clients for the whole life. So, and I've seen this stuff. I prayed over these people who 
had a relationship with prostitutes. Oh my Lord. And just before I finish this an example, I received an email a couple of years ago and, and it was the mother who said to me, Father, help my daughter. She's only 13. She doesn't go to school, she can't. Each time she goes, she collapses and you know, she's been in hospitals and examined by doctors and they, psychologists, psychiatrists, nothing wrong, but she cannot function. <coughs> Please help me. So I said, okay. So we went to the parish and I was waiting in the rectory because she lived just opposite the rectory and I had a couple of people with me. So the beautiful girl just walked in and started saying hello, 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 hello. When she stood in, in front of me, bang on the floor, straight away. Just on the floor and started in convulsions and, and shaking and jerking and everything. So I started praying. Anyway, I performed a lot of exorcisms. It was horrible to see this little girl. Anyway, she was free completely. The demons are coming out of her mouth. She saw them. She, she was explaining to me how they looked like. Why? Why that little girl was possessed? It was unbelievable. Anyway, she was fine. And then I talked to her mother. And I said, what do you, what do you do in you know, for, for, for leaving? What do you do? Oh, well, I was in, in Germany. And, uh, you know, Father, but what did you do in Germany? No. <laughs> I was with men. <laughs> when your prostitution said, oh yes, I had to. I had no money, I had to. So she was a prostitute. So then I had an answer. <laughs> she was a prostitute. How the girl was affected, I still don't know. But the poor girl definitely got this stuff from her mother. And then <laughs> when the girl was freed, the mother got possessed. The demon manifested in her. But I, do, I didn't do anything. She sent me a horrible message. said, you so and so, F off, you know. The demon sent me a message to me through her mother. That woman. How dare you to, you know, to deal with my daughter, you so and so. I know it was the demon, but she got possessed. Can you imagine what's happening with the prostitutes? What's happening there? So even one short visit, incident, you know, really ruins your life because you receive everything from, from the prostitutes, from, from the women. I'm not even talking about homosexual stuff because it's even more and more and more and more <laughs> thing happening. But it, I'm just opening your eyes, I hope, for this invisible real world. Don't be scared because really is we have God in our hearts. Even if you think, I need confession, I need to do, do it after the retreat. Go to your priest, confess. Don't panic. But I hope that this one day or two days together was very helpful to you to see something that you maybe couldn't see so far. <laughs> and maybe it will be helpful in your family, your neighbor, your whoever. The Lord will send you because this stuff, it's, people don't talk about it at all. And so many people, more and more people are, we're having mental problem. In England, a friend of mine, she's a, a psychiatrist. And she specializes in adolescent time, you know, the 16, 17. It's over a year to wait for the appointment. What is happening? Over a year you have to wait with your son or daughter to see the psychiatrist. And, they, and, and she said to me privately, Father, I'm a Catholic Christian, but by law I cannot refer anyone to you. And I know that half of my patients are not mental. They are spiritually affected. It would be your job, not mine. But by law I cannot do it. So I stamp the head, so and so, disease, blah, blah, blah. 
and that person, the life is over. 16, 17, and the life is over. I don't know how it looks in America. The same is in Europe, everywhere. So I'm telling you now, we are going to have zombies, young people. Zombies, spiritual zombies. What kind of marriages they will have? What kind of families they will have? What kind of priests will get? There will be future priests. There will be future bishops. There will be future politicians. What kind of people we have? Already infested with spirits. So it is scary, but I hope that the Lord is over everything, you know. He knows what's happening. Some kind of purification will come. It must come. And we have to just put our trust in him completely. And that's what I said this morning. Believe in me. Never break away. Even if they will fight with you. They will say, renounce your faith. Just leave it. You lose your job. You lose everything. Stay faithful to the Lord. Stay faithful. And be proud and be grateful today, even when we start praying now, say thank you, Jesus, that I am Christian, I am Catholic, I believe, I've got you, I was here, I've got this beautiful place. I could be even this weekend to learn some more stuff and, and leaving tomorrow, you will say, come on, I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. I now I can go really, I can do something. Because that is all, all about Okay, <laughs> we need to pray now. So, was it that helpful what I said? So, it is a very difficult to explain in a very short way, time and everything, but I try my best. There's another subject, another about forgiveness, about fear, which paralyzes people's life. Don't fear. Remember, I said, do not fear. How many times in the Bible? 365 times. He said, do not fear. It one time per day. Exactly. 365 times in the Bible it says, do not be afraid. Do not fear. So fear kills your faith and trust. So remember, don't fear. Trust in the Lord and believe in him. And never, never, ever break away from him. We need to fight to the end. Remember St. Paul? I fought to the end. And then... I've got the reward in heaven. So we need to be fighters. Sometimes we fall, sometimes we sin, sometimes we do silly things, stupid things. Don't worry. Get up and, f and go. Go ahead. Okay? Promise? Yes. Now we are going to pray. Before I, before I go, now I've got two brochures. It's the Reiki and it's the Yoga. Believe me, terrible things. Yoga in the parishes. Spirits of yoga. There's nothing to do with Christian. There's no Christian yoga. And the Reiki. Uh, I have gone in two. You can maybe ask for uh, copies or something. Someone was interested in. Because they explained why Reiki is bad and why yoga is bad. I'm sorry for you if you have yoga in your parish hall or somewhere. But believe me, it's nothing to do with Christian yoga spirits that destroying people's, people's souls, people's then is nothing to do. And, it's, uh, and this is Reiki stuff, healing or harming. So if anyone would like to make a copy, so I'm just leaving these two brochures over here. There's no time to explain, but it's very important to know they are very dangerous.